Thank you very much. Have you seen a scene like this before? I was sitting, waiting for my wife from a dentist appointment outside the mall where Tim Hortons was. Three Tim Hortons staff members left in rapid succession. The first person to leave walked past the empty cup on the floor beside the garbage can. The second person to leave walked past and actually sort of stepped on and sort of kicked the cup on the ground by the Tim Hortons garbage can. The third staff member to leave came out of the Tim Hortons, looked at the garbage on the ground, picked up the cup and put it in its rightful place. Now which of those three would you like to have on your team? The third one. The third one. That's the right answer. The third one because they have what's called discretionary effort. And discretionary effort means you go that just a little extra mile. Something needs to be done, you don't mind doing it. In fact, you have not even, even see it that, 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 that needs to be done. So you actually go for it and try to do it for yourself. So that little extra discretionary effort. So I want to talk about employee engagement today. And employee engagement is defined as a heightened emotional connection to the organization whereby you want to do your best with discretionary effort, i.e. you want to go just a little extra piece. Now where does that research come from? Towers and Perrin. Towers and Perrin conducted a global research study of 88,000 people, middle and uh, lower um, um, classes, not class, I want to look for No, no, it's middle, middle, middle and small businesses and companies and organizations. Middle small business, thank you though. Um, and 80,000 in 18 countries, and they asked them, how do you feel emotionally, uh, mentally, and spiritually about your work? And what they said was, 21% said, we're engaged, we are there, we're ready to go, we show up on time, we love the job we do, we were actually kind of sad, we had a TBIF, too bad, it's Friday. <laughs> TBIF, you know you got a good job, you got TBIF. But 41% said they were enrolled. And enrollment is like, you're not quite there, your bum's in the chair, but you're not entirely there. So enrollment is 41% of the global workforce population. The largest study ever done on, on employee engagement. 41% they're just enrolled. And what they lack was a little bit of an emotional connection to the organization that they're with. A little bit of emotional connection to the organization. The other stats go like this. Disengaged, dis, oh, disenchanted, right, they enrolled. Disenchanted, 31%, 30% were disenchanted. They didn't like what was happening around them. They would do the job to the degree of their ability, and they punched the clock and do whatever they had to do, but they gave nothing extra to the company. They didn't even talk much about it on the street afterwards. That's the kind of person when you ask them, how do you like your work, they say, ah, looking for a new job. They're disenchanted. And the manager's nightmare, they're completely and utterly disengaged. The manager's nightmare. Because what do the disengaged folks do? They sabotage wherever they get a chance. So I want to share with you some thoughts and ideas around how do you actually bring folks forward to be deeply, deeply enrolled or engaged in the work that they do and love it, absolutely love it. What can you do? And I've developed seven, seven steps, seven keys rather, um, to uh, unlock, and what I mean by that, I mean free up, release, let go, uh, the whole notion of the, of the employee engagement. And the unlock thing comes from, um, from uh, my experience traveling in Asia. When they train elephants, they train little baby elephants with, with cable. On their, on their, like a steel cable on their, on their, on their foot. So they're, they're going around the cage and they get so far and they go, and then they realize that's the limit. That's as far as they think they can go. So they go over here and the, the foot goes, and that's as far as they can go. Once they get that message, they replace the cable with a, a light cord. Now the cord could be broken, but they feel the tension of that limit, imagination limitation, and they, they feel the tension of the cord and they go, oops, better stop because I've been trained to stop. So I think sometimes we, we train our workforce, we train our people, we train our children to have limits on their imagination, to have limits on who they can be and what they, where, how far they can go in their life. So I want to talk about that whole notion of actually going far beyond the possibilities to unlock with seven keys this whole notion of being engaged in life and therefore being engaged in, in the talent, in what you do with your talent, talent and your time, which of course is what we call work.